and welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Jay Amar Speaks. I am super excited for today's episode, y'all. We are in for a treat because today's guest is the ultimate boss chick. She is a fitness professional, she is the founder of Homegrown, and she is the CBO and coach of Three Hammers Training. Guys, we're gonna talk about her journey to fitness. We're also gonna play a fun game of Daddy Little Girls, and we're gonna make a poppin' Dominican dish. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming my girl, Mabel. Okay, so right now Mabel is cutting the plantain into like a little boat situation and we're going to put them in the oven and then we're going to fill them later with our guac and shrimp. Some pop in yeah. um, classes, which was fantastic because I was able to 
um, work with clients not only in at Soul Cycle in the classroom, but I could have them in my boot camp classes. At that time, I was trying to figure out who I was as a fitness yeah. instructor, um, and I love that that avenue of like venturing out of who am I outside of Soul Cycle because I worked at Soul Cycle for as an instructor for maybe five plus years, wow. um, and that was such a beautiful time in my life. I really loved. You were even um, like featured in like articles, like things were written. Yeah, like, it was, it was yeah, a it really was cool about. time. I loved, I loved what I did there. Um, Forbes was of the what yes. I was featured in. Yes, Forbes. And when I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I was like, a lot of imposter syndrome was mm, kicking in when with Soul Cycle. Real. I was dealing with a lot of like, am I worthy of this? Mm. Am I? Can I do this? Um, um, but it was beautiful. Soul Cycle yeah. did so much for me, and I met so many amazing people. Um, and I learned so much from from just teaching a class yeah. 45 minutes in a, in a dark room yeah. and I'm just who I am, what I want to be. Yeah. And it was more about like connecting with people through music for me and movement. Yeah. It was like, how am I going to relate to or connect to the, the person yeah. in the, the fifth row? Yeah. And yeah. That I don't even know if, if there's anything we have in common, but right. next thing you know, we, they, the person walks out of my class like, Thank you so much for playing that song or thank you so much for what you said and that's kind of how it led to my relationships with um people outside of soul cycle yeah. and, and what led to my relationships with people even with my own brand with homegrown yes. so at sax i was able to like venture out of, mm -hmm. of that but also after that i maintained really good relationships um where i felt confident enough to to start my own thing wow so yeah wow and i think that's definitely i mean to anybody that's watching like that's so encouraging because sometimes we can get so pigeonholed into thinking like this is all I do even if you're not into fitness whatever that may be that job that you just have not knowing that there's so much more to me outside of this you know it doesn't mean that you're neglecting what you have but just tapping into that other section because you would have never known about like home. oh no you would have never even maybe like thought about doing that and I think that too in itself just shows like once you're able to work hard at something and you can actually put your mind to it there's so much more that you probably don't even know about yourself Exactly. Yeah, like talk so, about homegrown. So those who don't know what homegrown is. Like. So during the pandemic, I lost my job with SoulCycle in April. And I kind of, a part of me panicked. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. But then I realized, and I was watching the news, I was like, no one knows who we're <laughs> No one knows right. what's happening. But just the the doer, the, the person that mm -hmm. I feel like I, I comes to mind right now is my mom. Yeah. Um, there's never, there could be problems, but there's always solutions. Exactly. There's always going to be a million problems, but there has to be a solution. Yeah. So my, something kicked in right away and I was like, what's my solution? And I'm, I need to work out. Whenever I'm stressed, I need to work out. Yeah. So that was my solution. I was like, how can I um, offer this to people? Yeah. Um, meaning a workout to people right. while we are unable mm. to meet in the classroom. Cause I felt for a long time, I was only good for a classroom. Mm. And then what happens if Saks Fifth Avenue is closed? I can't That's offer true. those pop-up shops anymore. So um, Zoom happened. Yes. So we were able to meet through Zoom. And a lot of my, my riders and my clients that I worked with at SoulCycle were like, hey, I really want to work wow. out. What can I, what can you do right. for me? So right. I was like, all right. So I created a schedule and I created a whole yes. little business and I created that, I created Homegrown. Wow. Um, and it was kind of, even at that point I was learning, I, I I had just recently um, stepped into a CrossFit gym, yeah. and I was like, I know I need to get stronger. Um, I know this is gonna be good for me. Yeah. But then they shut down as well. Wow. So I had a bunch of equipment in my mom's house, right? And I just started working out in the backyard. I wow. would YouTube. I'd reach out to some of the wow. coaches, and like, they best they could help me as best they could. Yeah. Um, however, it was more of like, what can I do for myself? Mm. And it was just me, me, me. Yeah. I um, mean, I loved that. I yeah. never felt stronger. I never felt so. Um, I felt like while the world was falling apart, I was growing. Yeah. And I felt like I was thriving, I was manifesting. Yes. I was like, yes. this is, I'm not, this is yeah. temporary for yeah. me. Um, yeah. And I felt so amazing. And yes. it, it sounds kind of messed up to say. No, I, know. I felt, because it was such a hard yeah, time. Yeah, okay. blessing the curse, like we said. Blessing right? the yeah. curse. But I felt like I never felt truer to who I was at the mm. time. And that's the beauty of homegrown. I really wow. created something out of nothing yeah and, legit. and people still literally look to me to 
for their workouts. Wow. And uh, it, it's still small, yeah. and I want to keep it that way. Yeah. I want to have that personal connection with my clients. Um, there's more that I can do, I know that I can, but however, I'm at a place now where I know how amazing it is to, to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, or in a group setting, yeah. or in person. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I've wanted for a long time, and I'm happy I can do that now at, wow. at a gym. Yeah. Yeah. And the 
guys don't know what that's yeah. like. Um, yeah. So they do lean on me for that. Yeah. So I think they definitely use me in for the right reasons. Yeah. So I feel like representation matters. Um, yeah. And I'm so lucky to be to be that female wow. in that gym space. Exactly. Um, but it had, it, it's hard. It is hard. It is hard. It is hard. <laughs> but you know, I love that realness because I feel like that's, again, something we don't talk enough about because I do feel like sometimes as women we have to put on the extra, mm -hmm. like, no, especially when you're with a lot of men or a lot of males, you know what I mean? And I think that, again, it's not like they're being disrespectful or anything, but I think just knowing that, okay, I am the one different out of this group just by nature, you know? Yeah. So, making sure like your voice is heard and it is being expressed. And I think something that she said that was so profound to me is like being understood, right? Like not just being heard, but being understood. I think that A lot of times watching, they don't understand yeah, why, yeah. you know? You know, and it's just not their fault, you know? They're probably, yeah, but it's just guys so think they're they're different. Different. Yeah, they think differently. But then I also think to your point, the beautiful thing about it is that you add that layer of being a female, right? So people can also relate to you differently. People, yes. you know, can see themselves in you and you being a Latino woman. Like, you know what I mean? I yeah. think that all adds so much flavor to the brand in itself, Absolutely. right? You know, so it's not just like, oh, it's just a male thing. Like, no, like, no. you can see yourself in me. You know what I mean? I'm doing it as a woman. You can do it too, you know? And I think that to me is one of the most beautiful things about it, you know, especially in the fitness world. Yeah. Okay, so now we have added our shrimp in. We're gonna let that cook for a bit. And then we're gonna add our tomatoes, some onions. This is all gonna help make our guac. So don't forget to add your fresh lime. That also gives it a nice zesty flavor. While we're just doing this last piece, we're gonna play a really quick game of daddy's girls. Okay, so, so we're gonna just have some questions randomly shot at each one of us. Matthew is going to oh, Matthew is going. Oh. some questions and we're gonna answer it based on our experiences being daddy's girls. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna get into it. All right, so let's Matthew, let's do it. Right, Matt, maybe we're gonna take the first question. Right. I am? Okay. Okay, wait, wait. I'm listening. Ooh, depends on what it is. Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. What do you love about your dad the most? Aww. Okay, maybe I'll take that one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, what do I love the most about my daddy? Hey, daddy. Um, he's honestly the best. Similar to you. Like, my dad is hilarious. He's so funny. He literally is the coolest, smartest person. Like, I feel like he taught me so much about just, like, life, money, finances, just everything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he would take us on vacations every year. Like. He just instilled so much in us. And I remember one time we were going to church and I was like, Daddy, why do we have to take the train? You know, I want to just take a taxi. I'm tired of being on the D train. Like, you know, I was just complaining. Yeah. He was like, he called me and I said, Nana, when you make it in life, uh, one day you'll appreciate taking the train. When you have a driver, you will know that you can uh, take a train. You will understand how to take the train. And I'm like, I don't want to hear that right now, but I, it's good. Like, well, I love, yes. I love, whenever there's like a movie playing or anything, the dads always make me cry. Right? Oh, and it's you like, just like brought him to life. I know. It's like that oh, dude dad. Like, oh, I leave love. Oh, it's so good. I know. Yeah, but I definitely, again, my dad has been such an amazing person, even till today. Like, he gives the best advice. And he's honestly one of my best friends. My mom, too, again. Shout out to my mom. Shout, Shout out to, to our, mom. wait, we love our mom. Yes. Right? Yes. And our brothers. And our brothers. And our brothers. And we got brothers, too. <laughs> yeah, we got brothers. I know. So, yeah, that's one thing I love. What is the best impression of your dad? Oh, okay. This is Mama, like, I have a few, dad. I have a few. The best impression of your dad? So I my dad, dad be watching it like, let me see, let me see. Let's see. see. <laughs> my dad is just, this is the first one that comes to my head. Okay. He just lives vicariously through anyone that's played basketball. Oh so he's just kind of like, he lives, that was, that was his prime. All right? right, so just imagine this guy, he, when he came to New York in the 80s, mm -hmm. he didn't speak, he didn't speak English. Wow. Okay, so he only spoke Spanish. Wow. Um, so he loved playing basketball, but uh -huh. he worked at a factory in Brooklyn. Right. And he, during their lunch break, him and the guys would always play basketball. And he'd always joke, and he's not joke, he's actually really serious, sorry. Dead serious, and he'd say, Yo era matatan. He's like, Yo era matatan. Totiga en la calle me decían a mí. Oh. Watch him, watch him. He got J. Yeah. And that means, what well, actually, I'm gonna translate this. I'm gonna translate this. He would say that he was such a shooter. He played so well in basketball, he was such a shooter. You need to guard him because he has J. He got J. Black, you Yo. got J. So he loves to tell anybody that story. Oh my goodness. No, and, I then, know. and my dad is always like very talks with yes. like slamming the table. And it's like they would think that like this. There's a fight. Like he's not but he's just talking. He's just like, yo era un, yo era un duro. Yeah. Like, it's very, and duro means like hard. I was right, hard. Right, 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 so, right, right. Um, it's a lot of love. Yes. Yeah. on the table yes. in our home. Just, I love it. That's how I love it. Shout out to your dad. 
Yes, I love it. Himself. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, we it's love it. Very that. aggressive. Very aggressive. Right? It's dad himself. <laughs> it's such a yeah, sweet man. Like the sweet, no, no. My father's the type he'll beat you in Africa. Let me explain to you why I beat you. I'm like, I don't want to hear why you beat me. <laughs> Wait, I love that. <laughs> like, no. Alone. Like, my what? dad does not care. Like, He's what? like, you need to do better. That is awesome. Okay, next question. What's the most embarrassing thing your dad has done? Oh! Oh! Ooh. 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 <laughs> Maybe we'll answer that question too. Okay, okay. answer that question. Okay. 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 Yo, that yeah. one? Okay. Okay, okay, I'm gonna start with my most embarrassing thing. It was eighth grade prom, right? And I will never forget. It was so annoying. My father dropped off me and my friend. Shout out to Chanel and Nathan. We all went to the prom together. We're all there. Da -da -da -da. And he's like, no, what time does the prom end? I'm like, it ends like, I don't know, midnight or something. He's like, okay, no problem. So everybody's there, you know, everybody's like, ah, ah, they're having a good time. It was like a nice fall they rented for us. And all of a sudden, no parents are there. I see my father like, Nana, Nana, you said it's 12 o'clock. I'm like, why is he here? Like, what? I said, oh my. He's like, I'm Julia, I think you're, are you Nana? Are you Nana? <laughs> Call, calling Nana to the dance, to the dance floor. I was so embarrassed. Nana. I was like, if you know, if you know you have no cell phone this week, can like he just showed up, we could have waited outside the venue. Why are you coming in? It's like I want to see what you guys are doing. Like, oh my goodness. My dad was so annoying for that. Like, I was just oh mortified. My God. I was like, you just messed up my whole I night. Like, I don't know how much cooking is happening <laughs> over here. Okay, oh. what about you? What's the most embarrassing thing you I think I might, my dad <laughs> might kick me. I might not be allowed in the house when I go over there. <laughs> Yo, it was like a month like of that. like, Seriously, he like, was just, I was 
like, what is going on with this man? That my mom was like, no, 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 we're gonna have to get him diapers. No, no, no. She's like, este hombre está, está de pinga. Yes. It's like he's on a roll. Like I don't know what. It's like I can't look after a grown ass man. <laughs> but we laugh. Yes. Yo, Next dad. question. <laughs> Next question. What have you learned most from your dad? Oh, what have I learned the most? Okay, this is a good one. Um, yeah, like I've just learned how to be content in any situation, whether you have it or whether you don't. I think that's one thing my dad taught my brother and I, which was super important. Like we grew up in the South Bronx, one bedroom apartment in the '90s in the hood. You know what I mean? So like he really taught us like. Yes, we live in this environment, and yes, this is where you're from, but you still have to walk like, with, you know, like you carry yourself like you are somebody when you walk in the neighborhood, when you, you know, when you step outside there. And he really taught us about like, just like work ethic, right? Like, go to bed early, wake up on time, go to school, be, you know, take pride in your work, take pride in everything you do, don't just do things anyhow. I remember even when we go on vacation, my friend was like, you need to dress up, we're gonna go to the airport, you have to dress up, because you know, as black people, they're looking at us already. I'm like, oh my God, oh. I'm gonna dress up. You know, my dad was the type, oh, summer vacation, you're reading a book, do a book report. I'm like, the teacher don't even want no book report. Do a book report. You know, so like he was very much that. like, yeah, like, you know, he taught me so many life skills that are with me today, you know what I mean? And I pray to, you know, take that to my kids and have that be something that they also learn about. So, yeah, he definitely taught me a lot. For That's sure. Awesome. For sure, for sure. What about your dad? I think my dad, what comes to the top of my head right now is he's always wanted us to do right by people. Yeah. At the end of the day, um, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. Oh my God, yes. Do it and always do right by people because mm -hmm. you never know. And it's and it's true. I, I'm I study communications. Yeah. I've worked with people. Yeah. Um, I pride myself in being a people people person. Yes. Um, and something that I've I just gained from him is just like even just greeting people, saying mm -hmm. good morning. Um, leaving and saying goodbye, mm -hmm. um, showing people respect. That to me is like, I, I hold myself with that standard. Yeah. If someone doesn't say hi, yeah. um, and if it's just things that I complained about, like, oh my God, do I have to say, do we, right. maybe we have to, or like leaving for family parties. Mm. You have to say bye to everybody. everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, so now we're gonna add the finishing touches to our dish. We've let our plantain cook for about 25 minutes in the oven. And so now we're gonna add the guac mix that we did and we're also gonna add some shrimp to top it all off. Remember, if you can't eat shrimp, you can add chicken, veggies, whatever you can eat to make sure this tastes good for you. So now it's the moment of truth. Yeah. I like to like even put a little, Ooh, yes, okay, the lime. talk to you about your goals. Um, I just want to really find a way to inspire and connect with women that want to get strong or anyone that wants to get strong and just kind of continue this conversation yeah, of yeah. having real lives and yeah. having real things happen to yes. us and we keep moving, we keep going on. And That's right. Thank you so much oh for having gosh, me. Oh my of course. Yeah, it's no, been such an honor. This, this is probably one of my favorite episodes. Oh, Hands down, thank you. so much fun, guys. And I really love that it's really like I, I'm, I'm just so proud of my culture, and I know yeah. you are too. Yeah. And it's finding ways to just still be true to who we yes. are. So yes. thank you of for course. creating a platform oh for goodness. this. Of course. Thank you for your team. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank just you. invite 
inviting me over no, for this. This is I'm like amazing. Safety. No safety. No safety. No safety. Whatever you want to make, we can cook. We yeah, can cook. look, we're about to have our own show. I'm about to do this. I have to do a whole production, y'all. She's like, cut that check. She's a business woman. Y'all understand that, right? I'm a block on Oh my god. So good, guys. No, seriously, this is amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode. Ciao. Bye.